video starting, so it's probably underway already. There we go. All right. Hello, everyone. I know it's super, super late. I'm really excited to be here. I've been uh, busy all day kind of doing some things of um, actually <laughs> raising some funds for a couple of business deals that I'm working on. So that uh, kind of sidetracked me. So not wanting to forget about you all. Um, I wanted to hop on and do a training today and it's been on my mind. I had wrote some notes down in the morning and now I'm coming back to it. So um, as I was scrolling through Instagram today, oh, before I get to that, if you're watching the live, type in hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, type in hashtag replay. Uh, if you wanna see more content like this, then let me know in the comments by saying more, okay? Um, and today we're gonna talk a lot more, I'm gonna draw in a lot of my business background and change management, and then I'll tie that into how it relates to weight loss, okay? Um, so today I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across Alex Hermosi. If you have not heard of Alex Hermosi, I highly recommend you go watch him. YouTube, Instagram, he's amazing, gives out great free content, um, all designed to help you grow your business. So, um, so I had come across one of his Instagram posts today and he had been talking about if they don't have what you want, don't listen to what they say. And, and it made me think of my weight loss program. And of course, I'm not down to um, my goal weight yet. However, I have lost almost 100 pounds. Well, I did lose the 100, went back up three, but I'm down back one. So now I'm at 98 pounds. So neither here nor there. Okay, because it's an up and down. It's a process. It's a journey. But what that got me thinking about was, what was it that I wanted? Uh, when I first started this journey, because it wasn't like I was following a set program. I wasn't following uh, an exact plan or a workout routine or schedule or anything like that. Um, so what I did find is when I was thinking about it today, what I really wanted is I wanted really simple things. And those were not things that were shown for different diet coaches because when I looked at different programs and stuff like that, most of the time I looked at them and I'm like, I, I can't do that uh, or that's too hard. And, and I'll get to some reasons as to why I was thinking that way. Um, and it's not like I have a negative mindset or anything like that. Um, the problem is, is when you've grown up with trauma, uh, you tend to narrow your scope of vision and you don't um, you don't trust that things can actually happen for you because you know over the course of time things have been shown to you that even if you do try or even if you do try to change things that it doesn't actually work. I went on my first diet when I was in grade three. And I remember going to my very first Weight Watchers meeting and I was, I was actually excited about it because I was going to get to do something with my mom and I was really looking forward to it. And my mom always worked. She was a single mom and so she was always working. So getting time with her was a challenge. And going to this Weight Watchers meeting, I was really excited because they had these like little trackers and stuff like that. We get to get on the scale and get weighed and then there was going to be a meeting afterwards. And I was really excited about this whole process because I got to do something with my mom. But there was something that happened and I don't know what it was. I was a kid. I was in grade three, so I was about eight years old. And um, but I annoyed my mom. And uh, what I ended up remembering is her telling me that she was, I was embarrassing her. And she didn't know, but I internalized that, that I was an embarrassment because of my size, because I was a bit bigger. What we didn't understand is that's also when the, the majority of the really bad sexual abuse that I went through started and that's why I gained the weight 
because I was trying to cope with the feelings that I was dealing with through food. But we didn't understand that at that time. And there was nothing like online stuff to be able to talk about this or any of that kind of stuff. So back to what I was talking about before in understanding what it is. <laughs> hey, Sonia, nice that you could join in. <laughs> um, so understanding what it is that I wanted. So when I was starting on this, like I said, I have been on diets since I was eight years old. I've been on so many different things. And over the time, it's like, you know, some would work for a little while and then you bounce back up higher. So you get discouraged. So two years ago, when I started this journey, it wasn't, it wasn't even really a deliberate effort. It, it was, it was things that I started to notice after the fact. And it was because I started to work on the internal part of me and I started to feel better about myself and I started to have belief that I could do certain things. Um, that's when things started to change for me. And if you had asked me what I had wanted, um, cause I mean, I had looked at some, um, programs and it's like, you know, they're really athletic women and they have great bodies and they're so like they've lifted weights and they've done like competitions and in bikinis. And I'm like, Oh hell no, that's not what I want. I don't want to, even when I get down to the size, I've been so used to being this big, the thought of being in a bikini is really challenging for me. I'm not there yet. Okay. So what I wanted, I wanted simple things. Like I wanted to not struggle getting in and out of a car. I wanted to not worry about whether or not I fit. I wanted to not worry about, you know, the fact that I'm in the plus size clothing store and I'm at the highest size level and I'm not sure I can find clothes that can actually fit me. Those were my concerns. So the thought of like, oh, you want your beach bod? No, unless, yeah, no, I won't even go into that because it's not nice and I'm not going to be mean to myself. I don't do that. But, um, you know, those kind of things were really scary for me and they were not believable for me. So I wanted things like being able to get up and down the stairs without having to hold the handrail. I wanted to be able to put my shoes and socks on without it being a friggin' workout that causes me to sweat just moving my own body around is a workout. So this is why I say things like you don't need to go to the gym because I didn't go to the gym. In fact, the more I worked out, the worse it made it for my body. I was trying to be on the treadmill and stuff like that. Yes, I bought a treadmill and then ended up selling it on Facebook marketplace for less than I bought it. <laughs> you know, all those kind of things. At least it didn't become a coat rack. Well, most of the time. <laughs> But, um, so those are simple things that I wanted. I, I wasn't looking for that gorgeous fit toned body and I'm still not there. I just wanted to be able to move around. I wanted to wear clothes without feeling uncomfortable in my own skin. That's what was what I wanted. And, you know, now is that going to change as I go along? Maybe when I start getting closer to my goal weight, I'll be like, Hey, let's go do a beach body competition or something. Yeah, probably not, but that's okay. Um, I'll wait until I get there, but I have lost a hundred pounds, like I said. So if that's something that you're interested in, because I'm not perfect, I haven't got all the answers and I still struggle with this, but I'm documenting my journey now. So if you want to wait until next year, when I hit my goal, that's fine. You can do that. But in the meantime, you'll know that I'm legit, that this is, this has been something that I have done myself and I'm on my way. So now why I talk about this is because it's one thing understanding what you want and who you want to learn from, because it's kind of like, yes, maybe university level is great. And that's the fastest, best way to get there. But if you're just in kindergarten and you're having trouble just getting up and down off of the couch, 
you know, or up and down the stairs and stuff like that, you don't need the gym. There's things that you can do to help at least reduce the weight so it's not such a big deal. So even though I had a very strong mindset and I pushed myself to do it, I usually ended up paying for it because carrying that much extra weight was really, really hard on my body. And when I used my mind to push through it, the amount of pain and inflammation that I ended up having for days afterwards was not worth it. And it actually made things worse. So having a more gentle approach is actually better for me. Um, and it helps me stay more consistent and keeps me on track without getting discouraged. So this is what I do. It's smaller steps that make the difference. And understanding that, you know, we're going to come across challenges. This is a long journey. This is not a, sh a sprint. You can't just do this in 90 days. Well, I mean, you can lose a hundred pounds in 90 days. Um, but will you be able to sustain that weight loss is another story. Okay. Um, because especially if you've had this weight on for a very long time, there's some changes that happen in your mind or maybe not. Maybe you're able to do that. You've had that switch. You maybe had a life scare or something like that, that you're just like, no, I'm done with this. But I needed something sustainable because the last thing I needed was to go down fast and then bounce back up higher. I can't do that. I could not risk that when I was almost 400 pounds. So being where I'm at right now at 236 um, is a lot better. And I actually took some time the other day, like, cause you know, I still think to myself, well, I still have like, you know, a little over a hundred pounds more left to lose. And it's easy to get focused on the things that are not going right. But I really sat with, um, the fact it's like, wow, it's been a really long time since I've been down to this weight, like really, really long time. Um, probably, I want to say maybe 2000, 2002, 2003, maybe that. Um, so it's been a long time since I've been down to that weight. And it feels good. Like I sat with my body and I, I thought, you know what, this actually feels good to just be lighter, to have my clothes being loose, although I'm going <laughs> to need to start to get some new clothes because these are getting really, really baggy. But uh, it's a good problem to have, right? Okay. So how I wanted to tie this in it, with change management. So in corporate, in business, and, and these aren't small companies that I had worked for. These are larger companies. And I was doing these things before I even actually knew they were called change management. These were just solving problems to me. And um, so we were working on a project and it was a pretty big project. There were some roadblocks um, that were happening and we weren't delivering on some of the uh, promises that the company had made to the two companies that they had brought on board. They had said, hey, if you two come together, then we'll be able to get you some cost savings with your freight. And um, But there were some challenges and these were all a bunch of little things that added up. And the problem is, is the the people that were higher up though, the authorities are in the case of like, you know, weight loss gurus, it's like, okay, they've hit their goal weight. So they know this can be done. So why isn't it being done? You just need to do the things right. But the people on the front line were like, but there are all these challenges that are coming up. The, your process that you want us to do doesn't fit because of this reason, because of that reason and, and all these different things. And, you know, so the, the senior management, they were, they were getting upset because things are not happening and it shouldn't be this difficult. Just follow the process, just follow the process. And 
there are people that are on the front lines, they're trying to follow the process, but when you hit a roadblock, what ends up happening is you start to compensate for it. You try to find workarounds, and then next thing you know, nobody's working together, nobody's working on the same thing, you don't have the right goals, and you're off track. And the other thing that was happening is the people that were on the front lines, they'd start to get discouraged because what would happen is, you know, there'd be a new system or a new process or something was going to be implemented and here's the new great thing that we're going to do. But those original problems, those small roadblocks were never addressed. They were never corrected and the people on the front lines didn't actually have the authority to change them. They didn't have the knowledge, they didn't have the expertise and they didn't have the power or the control to make the changes that they needed. And this happens a lot with weight loss as well, is we come across, well, here's your food plan, here's your workout routine, and just go do these things. And um, what ends up happening is our lives are different, our bodies are different. There's challenges that come up that we're not able to maybe follow through on that. And we start to get discouraged or, you know, we, we're not able to figure out how to overcome it. And then what ends up happening, we get discouraged, we stop doing the things that we need to do, and then, or we are doing the things, because I've had this before, where you are doing the things that you need to do, and then it stops working. And you're like, but I'm doing all the things, and it's not working. And that gets really, really discouraging. So maybe you backslide a little bit, and then when you try to go back on, it ends up being worse, it, or it doesn't work. Um, so I've had that before as well. So just like in change management, there's a process that you have to sit down, identify what those roadblocks are, figure out um, what the challenges are, put in an action plan to overcome those challenges, and then you have to measure and assess whether or not they're actually working. Now the thing is, is I've seen many, many change management projects fail because they do not have the support from the people around them. So if you you have one department that's really excited and this change is going to really help them, but another department where they're involved, it doesn't actually help them, they're not going to be as enthusiastic or supportive of the process to get those things done. You really need a change management expert to be able to come in to negotiate and uh, collaborate with everybody to get them all on the same page. And so this is how I end up doing this with myself of using the change management strategies to get myself on the right track, to get myself on the right page. And you can't just go over to the other department and start beating them up with a hammer, because guess what? They really will not comply to the process then. You really need to have a gentle approach to be able to gain buy-in, because when people see what's in it for them, why they want to do these certain processes, why they want to make these changes, and really understand that at a core level, they're much more likely to buy into it as well as if they have the ability to create the solution for themselves. They're much more likely to follow that process. This is what I help you do in the program is help you create a process that works for you. We work together. We help you understand what works best for you, your body, your lifestyle, whether you have kids, don't have kids, whether you work outside the home or inside the home, whether you are vegan or um, keto, it doesn't matter what food program that you're working on. It matters the process and understanding how to overcome the obstacles that come up, how to switch and pivot and change things as you need to. And this brings me to um, something from math class. I don't know <laughs> if it's been a while for you, but if you guys remember bed mass, um, and that's the order of operations. So bed mass is first you have to start with brackets, exponents, uh, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, right? So you have those five things. There's a certain order of operations. If you don't put those things in the right order, you will not get the right answer.
and it will not. <laughs> Take care, Sonia. Thanks for joining. Um, so if you don't do that in the right order, what ends up happening is you get the wrong answer, the wrong solution, right? So when you're going through this, a lot of times traditional methods, they want you to start with your food. They want you to start with your mindset. They want to start with your exercise, all those kind of things. For me, the number one, the first priority is sleep getting that under control is going to solve a multitude of problems. It will help with your mindset. It'll help with your body. It'll help with regulation, all of those kind of things. So sleep is the most important. The second one is your mindset and reducing stress, really getting to that. So, um, Part of the reason why I had gone up three pounds this past week, it wasn't so much the food, although I did make some choices that I wouldn't normally have done, but I had been under a lot of stress, had a death in the family as well. Um, my my, my ex-mother-in-law passed away and um, that was very challenging and it was really hard uh, to see her go. Um, but, you know, she went on her own terms. So um, that, and that is a good thing and uh, didn't have to suffer through to the end. So all of these things have been weighing on my mind. I found that it's like, okay, I was making that those bad food choices. And then what was happening is that fear was starting to creep in. And when that fear starts to creep in, you start grabbing more onto control. And this whole process has been about releasing that control, no restrictions, because part of growing up in, um, in an environment where trauma was an ongoing regular thing, trying to stay in control so that you can mitigate the damage was one of the biggest survival mechanisms. So trying to control everything with food, trying to control everything with our bodies, this helps us as long as we're in that fear state, we need that, that armor, that protective fat <laughs> to, to be on our bodies. And we cannot release that if we do not feel safe. So like sleep is number one. Number two is getting yourself to feel safe. That mindset of feeling safe, feeling happy and not in a state of fear. When you do that, then you can relax and you will automatically start to eat better food choices. Cause I can promise you the times where I have gone off my diets or gone off my program, whatever, I was tired and I was stressed out. It was never, Oh, I feel really rested and happy and good about myself. Let's go eat some crappy food to make me feel worse. No, when I feel good about myself, that's when I make really good food choices. I eat foods that are fresh, that are alive. And when I eat that, that's what I become. I become fresh. I become alive. And you can feel that in your body energetically. And when you feel fresh and alive, then it comes to the next thing, which is a natural order of operations is activity. When you feel happy, when you feel fresh, when you feel alive, you want to move around you want to go out and enjoy life. You want to expand, right? Um, and like, think of little kids when they're sick and not feeling well, or if they're scared, what do they do? They contract, they, they curl up, right? They, they withdraw. But if you release that fear, they want to eat good foods. They open up, they expand, they laugh, they enjoy, they move around, they have energy to, you know, beat the band, right? So when you do that with yourself, this is why inner child work and working on yourself in this way actually helps quite a bit. And then the last thing, the least important thing of all is tracking. <laughs> so the, the measurement on the scale, smallest piece. Yes, it gives you an idea that you're heading in the right direction or you're not. And I do use those tools. Um, Sometimes I'll weigh once a week. Sometimes I'll weigh daily. Depends on how I'm doing food wise. And I do that not as a way to beat myself up. It can 
there can be no place for fear in my program. You cannot be critical of yourself. You cannot beat yourself up. You cannot look at those numbers telling yourself, oh, you know, I just need to try harder. No. In fact, when I see it go up, that's when I pull back and I relax. I allow myself to eat things that I don't normally eat. And I, it's my way of telling my body, it's okay. We don't have to be in control. We can relax. We're safe. We can let this go, right? Don't worry. You're not going to go the rest of your life and never have a piece of cake or another piece of chocolate or whatever your favorite food is, right? You know, it's not that way. And as soon as you have that kind of mindset, that control, it's like, oh, I can't ever eat this way again, then it just automatically makes you want to crave that. It's like we always want what we can't have, right? So when I trick my mind that way by saying, okay, you want that? Go ahead, have it. But I don't do it as a binge thing where I'm just mindlessly eating. That's the thing that's very, very different. It's very intentional. So if I choose to say, I'm going to go have pizza, and I probably will regret it after I have it because it's like, oh yeah, now I remember why, because these kind of things happen in my body when I do that and I don't feel good, but it tasted really good in the beginning, right? So turning these things around, rewinding um, and really focusing on the most important things in the right order, sleep, making yourself feel safe and happy, then food, then activity, then tracking. Your KPIs, your measurements. And this is the thing, this matters in business as well. Your KPIs just give you an idea of direction, but sometimes, and I've seen this so many times, people just harp, they hammer on those KPIs so bad that it just leaves people feeling demoralized, that they're not motivated to do the things like they don't feel empowered to make the changes that they need to make, right? They're not bought in. So reversing the order, cha applying change management strategies, which are all about people, getting people to buy in. Because if people do not buy into the process, they will not comply. They will not follow through. They will not go the distance and you will not get a return on your investment. And no different than when you are doing this weight loss, whatever amount that you have to lose, when you're doing this, be kind with yourself, be patient with yourself first and foremost. That is going to get you so much further than being hard on yourself, being critical with yourself and beating a dead horse or trying to do this faster and faster because what's the rush? Okay. The only, the only time I see fast work is when you bounce back, man, that comes back so much faster than it ever took to get it off. So I wish I had known this back when I was 130 pounds and people kept telling me I just needed to lose 10 more pounds and then I would be good. So get rid of the idea that you are not enough. You are enough as you are right now today. And I don't care if you're 400 pounds. I don't care if you're 500 pounds. I don't care if you're 180 pounds. You are good enough today as you are right now start with that go back through if you just joined in welcome whoever just joined in i'm just wrapping up for the night but um oh aha before i go i had started with alex hermosi and his his saying of if they don't have what you want then don't listen to what they have to say if you want somebody that's at their goal weight to show you the way great go follow them if you want somebody who has been obese for most of her life and figured out a way to lose 100 pounds without dieting, without exercising at the gym on a regular basis, and I did this in a gentle way that validates me, that empowers me, that makes me feel good about myself regardless of the number on the scale, then continue to follow me. In the meantime, back to business stuff because I do a lot of different things, not just weight loss. Um, so Alex Ramosi, I don't know if you know, but he has a new book coming out and it's called hundred million leads. 
and this is all about getting leads for your business and how to do that and I have a link that um, if enough of us get um, on the zoom call with him we'll be able to do a one-on-one -on -one zoom call where you're able to ask him direct questions and if you comment below I will also give you the video link to Alex Ramosi's guidelines of what to eat and how he deals with uh, either weight loss or weight gain or proteins and stuff like that so I'll share that video with you as well I listen to his stuff some of the times and I imply I apply some things that work and some things that um, don't work for me, but that's okay. So uh, take what you like and leave the rest. And I hope you found this helpful. It, like I said, if you want to see more content like this, where I mix business in with weight loss, um, if you're like, no, Tina, I hate this. I only want to hear about weight loss. I don't want to hear about business. Or if you're like, hey, Tina, I want to know more about the business stuff. Tell me that stuff too. And maybe I'll create a separate group for that or something. Okay. So hope you guys have a great night and we will talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Bye. Oh, where's the end button? Oh, and in the background here before I go, I've got some of my artwork that I've done. So also part of my program. Take care. Bye.